I'm Nancy Sherrick, the mathematician behind Representations of the Braid Group, the winning video of Science Magazine's 2017 Dance Your PhD competition. This is a behind the scenes look of the math of our video. Let's do a little recap of everything we've learned so far. So we started with the braids, and those were these tangled, these beautiful tangled diagrams, and we grouped them together based on the number of strands they had, and then we learned about some relationships between the braids, whether we could slide the crossings back and forth across each other and so on. From there, we learned about a representation, and that's a special kind of function that inputs braids and outputs matrices. And it does it in a very special way that preserves all of the structure that we wanted to learn about the braids, but now the structure is in matrices. So the big question is, why, why did we do this? What do we gain by looking at the matrices instead of the braids? Well, the answer is we gained a whole lot. There was a very good reason why we did all of this. So let's just take a second and think back to the video. When the first braid enters the nightclub scene, we're sort of like shocked by this different landscape that we see. There's black lights, there's glowing numbers, there's dancers, there's just so much going on. And what I really wanted to convey there was this idea that we've really gone into a different realm, but that this realm is like a really cool place to be. And that's because matrices are super cool. And we, we have a lot to study them. We have a lot of power here. We have the entire field of linear algebra just right behind us, ready to study the matrices. So in the video, we focused on four sort of properties about matrices or operations we could do to matrices. So let's talk about them. The first thing we need to do is pick a matrix. So here I'm gonna call my matrix M and it'll be this three by three matrix. Now in the video, we saw these four operations, the invariant subspaces, conjugation, the trace, and the determinant. Now, invariant subspaces, the way that you find an invariant subspace for your matrix M is to solve an equation that looks like this. It's a little bit complicated, so I won't say too much, but invariant subspaces are super, super, super cool. The next thing that we did was conjugation. And in this part of the video, we saw a hula hoop dancer, and she is just an amazing dancer. It was super fun to have her in the film. And what you do by conjugation is you take your matrix M that you want to study, and you take a new matrix S, and you multiply on one side of the matrix, M, by S inverse, and on the other side by S. So what you're doing is sort of encircling the matrix M. And that's why I chose to represent it with a hula hoop, because you're kind of encircling your matrix. I know, I'm so funny. The other two operations that were depicted are a little easier to understand. The trace, what it does, is it's an operation that takes in a matrix and outputs a number. And this number sort of is measuring a property about your matrix. The way that you compute it is you add up the entries on the diagonal of your matrix. So here I'm going to go 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. And that's the trace of my matrix. Now, the coolest one and my favorite is the determinant. So like the trace, the determinant takes in a matrix, does some tricky thing to it, and outputs a number. And that number is, again, measuring some sort of quality of our matrix. So here's how you can compute a determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. You take the first two columns of your matrix and write them next door to the matrix. Then you compute products along these diagonals. So a little more complicated than the trace. You compute these products, you add them together, you do a subtraction, magic, 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 and you get a number out of it. But here's what's so cool. If you remember from the video, the determinant dancers danced in this big apparatus that had surgical tubing, actually, stretched across a rectangular frame. And the dancers pulled the tubes and danced, and it was really, really cool. But at the end of that portion, the matrix was sitting in the middle, and they wove the tubes around the matrix, and it looked just like this. They were actually doing a determinant, but sort of like in the physical world. So I think that's pretty fun. We are making a second math dance video and we need your help. Go to gofundme.com slash math dance to support our next project.